Hi folks, back again. Uh, going to continue tonight with the goose quill floats. I uh, showed you the other night how to prepare a quill uh, ready for making various different types. Took the liberty of preparing another two uh, just to demonstrate different styles of floats that can be made. Hopefully get them all done tonight in a wee 10 minutes. Uh, I'll turn the camera down, I'll let you see what I've got here. Uh, take my ugly mug off the camera. Right, I've got the three quills that I've prepared and I've took the liberty of painting a white tip on each one. These two will be finished with the quill with the heavy point upwards and this one with the heaviest part of the quill downwards. I've got two bodies, a cork one and a balsa one that I turned earlier. I made a wee video on how I turn them, I'll put that up again as well. Uh, we've also got the thread that I prefer to use which is a Gutterman thread from the, where is it? the Sulky range. Polyester thread, takes a lacquer really well, doesn't go all hairy which you will get if you use a cotton thread. Uh, tool wise I have tweezers, scissors and a nice sharp knife, essential. Uh, I've also got sitting here a draw thread. Now, for those of you who don't understand or haven't used, done any whipping before, draw thread is basically what makes the knot and makes your whipping complete. I'll show you what I do with that once we get started. I've also got here a small eye for one of the floats made and I've got a bit of wire I like to use 0.8mm jeweler's wire. A lot of guys use safety pins, just as good. I prefer to use the wire, because then I can make an eye to suit any type of stem material I'm using. I'll sh show you quickly how I do it. I've got a 3mm uh, hardwood dowel here. I put the wire across it, turn it around, on itself, pull it nice and tight round the cocktail stick or the dowel and then basically just hold it round, give it a wee pinch and pull it off and that's your eye formed. I leave the legs intentionally long so they can be snipped back to suit whatever I choose. So what I'll do first is I'll show you on one of these upward quills, a more traditional way of forming an eye on a quill. Now if you look at a quill closely, once you get one in your hand, you'll see on one edge the quill is actually pretty hard, kind of shiny. The rest of it's white. On the other side it'll be hard as well, but not as hard. Basically what we want to do is snip it down a wee bit, just about there to give us that. We want to, I'll try and zoom in for this wee bit actually, so we can see it better. I like to come up about three quarters of an inch. You want to give a 45 degree cut, now it's quite tough so just be careful cut like that. Not all the way through, you want to stop at the hard skin. Now turning the quill on its side, through the pith, you want to just take your knife in there, very carefully run the blade down to take out that section. Now your left soft pith on here. Now I find the best way is just to gently scrape it, again there will be other ways, but this is how I do it. You want to scrape that all off, work in one way, because you see it folds it back and it will snap it, same as we were doing when we were sanding it. Get as much of that off as you can, then I'll use a wee bit of 320 grit, 360 grit paper. 
I'm just working one way. Draw that. Quite tough. That's a knife. You basically want all that white off of there. And a nice clean shoulder at the top there. Spend a wee bit more time on it. Yeah. That'll do me. Now, what I've also got here, somewhere on the bench, there it is, is a 4mm modern carpers rig ring. Put that on there. And then what we want is that folded back on itself. It will go, no problem. Oh, twang. Put it back on. We want that folded back on itself on the inside of the claw. I'll just pinch it, I'll show you it in a wee second. We want it to look like that. With the ring loose. Now I'm going to jig back out a bit. With your thread, you want to start just where you made the cut. I'm holding it, as you can see, with these fingers under here, catch it with my nail, I'm going to whip over, right round, and then when you come round a second time, trap that first one under the second, and then continue. All the time, keep firm tension on it, but don't pull it too tight, because it will snap. And then, you want to work your way up, holding the bit of the quill that you turned on in itself. Sorry, I just realised I'm at the wrong angle there. Put that up. Just work that whip all the way up. Check it every now and again. Make sure it's nice and tight together. That's better. Just going to continue that whip all the way. And don't try, but don't worry about getting fast or whatever. Just need. Work your way up to the end of the small section that you turned up. That's me nearly at the end, so what I'll do now, using the knife, your tag end that you had here, you want to just cut that, don't go too close because you might cut your thread too close and just cut off the tag end. Now this is where the draw thread is used, so basically just a, what I use is a heavier gauge thread, it's actually an embroidery thread from the, the Gutterman range again. 
looped over to form a wee loop. You want to lie that with the loop pointing towards the top of your whip. Catch it with your thumb. And then what I do to stop the tag ends floating about, tuck it underneath and just catch it under your finger while you're holding your whipping thread. Then you want to come over the top, trapping the draw thread, and I like to give it another four turns. One, two, three, four. Always trapping that whipping thread with your finger. Use your scissors, cut off about two inches with my tweezers, catch the tag end through the loop, just hold it. Again, always holding your whip with the finger underneath. Take this thread, hold it with your fingers, and then pull the draw thread. And what that does is that pulls your whipping thread through underneath the whip. And that is basically it. Give it a wee tighten, push it up with your thumb, or whatever, then using your knife, cut it off, flush. Now you might have gaps as I have, I use the side of my tweezers, you can use a fly tires burnishing tool or whatever and basically just gentle rub on there and that will tighten up full whipping and that gives you let's see if I've got something to hold against that that gives you a well formed small loop eye on the bottom of your quill so that's one set that to side another way of doing it and what we'll do this time is I'll we'll use this one on a quill with the tip painted on the thin end of the quill. Now, what I'm going to do, just for extra strength, the very tip of the quill, just cut off the tip to give me a hole in the end of the quill, roughly 3mm in diameter. So that the female dowel I used earlier to form the eye will actually fit inside the quill. A bit tight. You want it neat, you don't want it moving about. Now, there's a membrane inside the quill. You can push this up out of the way, or you can take it out, whatever suits you best. So, that fits in there nice and neat. A wee dab of glue. There's the glue. Now, the glue I use for this Gorilla Super Glue Gel. Brilliant stuff. Being q Not that I'm advertising for them, but that's where I get it. Available, as they say in the telly, in all good wholesalers. We dab of glue in the end here. Because it's the gel, it sits there, it doesn't soak right into the cavity. So, we dab a glue in, don't know if you can see that. And then, the dowel. And I'll push this in about a quarter of an inch, six millimetres if you're modern and thoughts. Let that just take up for a wee minute. Uh oh. Be careful of that. And glue your finger there. Give that a wee second. I'll cut that off about three quarters of an inch. I'm going to put another wee dab of glue in there because I'm not happy with that. I'm 
glue my finger out again. What I'm going to do is sit that there for a wee minute while I prepare the eye. Now, the eye we formed a wee minute ago, I'll just straighten off the legs. Now, the length of this small stem, the bottom is about 5 8 to 3 quarters of an inch. <coughs> Excuse me. So, I'll use a wee pair of snips, scissors, and cut the legs to about the same. Easy peasy. So, that should have set me now. Yep. So, very similar situation. This one, the wee legs on the eye, one on either side of this, this small stem, held right up to the bottom. The exact same method. Oh, glue is not quite set, fingers stick to the glue. Cool. Obviously I would leave this a wee bit longer, but not just now. Same start, trap it with the thumb, round and over the top of the first one, and then carry on with the whip all the way up the stem. Just check that your eyes nice and straight, always keep a bit of tension on the, the thread. There we go, and then Continue the whip all the way up, covering the legs. You might need to actually go a wee bit tighter than this to hold the legs tight. If you feel you need it, a small spot of glue to hold the leg, the eye on before you start whipping. So what I'm going to do is try the end, and I'm going to cut that off just now. See a bit floating about. There we go. So, turning the float this time, just continue to whip, get to the end of the wee legs, nice and easy, release the tension slightly, and let it come down onto the dowel or the, the stem. Bringing it right up, let's see if we can show you this, to the bottom of the quill itself. Now, just to add it a wee bit fancy here, I'm going to spread the thread a bit and just give it a wee bit of spiral on the bottom. This also covers the quarter inch that you're inside the quill. Bring it back round the square and bring the whip in tight again. Draw thread again, line the top with a loop point towards the top of the float, catch it with my thumb, tuck the rest of it underneath, and then trap it with a whip. One, two, three, four. Cut it off, tweezers through the loop. and pull the draw thread. Trim it off, nice and flush. And then just tighten it up with the thumbnail. And then just tighten up the full whip itself. And that is a different style of whip again. Now this one, I actually plan on putting the balsa body on this float. So the balsa body that I've turned earlier on, just to get it to fit, firstly over the tip, slide it down. I've checked that it fits, so I'm making it look easy here, but already checked. So that'll come down to there, just now. <coughs> And that'll give you 
I'm also bodied. Goose quill and tenor float. Good for getting a wee bit further out. There's a lot of work to be done in this, obviously. Sorry. Getting a wee bit further out, wee bit of weight. Still super sensitive. Because when it's shotted down, it's going to come down. You know, to the tip. It's just showing the normal. So that's day two. Set them aside. Last one. I'm going to make a goose quill even with this one. <coughs> Sorry. For the ball, the cork body, I'm going to use cork this time. No difference, just personal preference. That will slide up to the white painted section. Sit on like that. It will be glued on and then it will be whipped and covered. The eye I'll put on the bottom of that one, won't do it just now, will be the same as the one that we put on this one. Or I could just leave it. In fact, I will. I'll just leave it. In fact, I'm going to leave it. What I'm going to do is cut the bottom of the stem a wee bit shorter. I'm cutting it at length. Through experience, shows me that this will float or sit properly in the water. Having made a few now, I think that's about six I think I've made. That there will be fine for me. A wee light rub on the sandpaper just to take away any sharp corners and that will be sealed with the lacquer. So, to recap, trot and float with a small ring. Could also be used in still water. Using it as a trot and float you would have your line through here and a rubber on the top. An even, crow coil, uh, goose coil, cork bodied even, similar, rubber, 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 and a balsa bodied goose coil antenna float. I'll leave it there just now. Next time I'll do a wee bit more whipping and show you me painting the tips. Thanks folks.